Um, so uh, basically, we're just going to cover the, the visa process today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the... Awesome. Uh, thank you, Sadaf. Um, so basically, we're just going to talk about the visa process today, uh, what you need to do as soon as you get your I-20, and basically uh, all the way up to the interview day, right? And um, yeah, the first part may be a little bit boring just because it is a lot of the documents you have to fill out. It is a, a process that could be confusing, but uh, as long as you just follow along, uh, you'll be able to, to get through this uh, fairly easily. And um, and then again, we're just gonna cover the the, the visa interview, you know, uh, questions that you may be asked during the interview that, uh, again, and some some tips basically uh, for you to, to consider when you go to the visa interview. Um, Also, um, I am recording this presentation. So um, after I'm done, maybe today, tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow because it's, it's Saturday, but today or Monday, I will email the presentation to everyone who registered, even if uh, someone couldn't attend, uh, attend uh, they, will be, um, they will obtain a copy of this uh, recording as well. Okay, so um, let's see. It's 9.04, let's just get started. And also, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat, and we'll we'll have a Q and A um, a Q and A part at the end uh, where you can just ask all the questions you want. Again, just remember this is mainly about the the visa process and about the the interview process. If you have any questions related to admissions or or uh, admission documents, admission requirements, uh, anything like that. Uh, I may not be able to get to those questions just because I don't want the presentation to be like really lengthy, right? So I just want to focus on the topic today, which is the visa process. Okay, let's get started. As I said before, this is what we are going to cover today. Um, okay, so about scholarships. Uh, again, this that's probably a question for uh, for another for another webinar. We're just going to cover uh, the visa process in this webinar. Now, uh, let's get started. So, basically, this is what we're going to cover today, right? Obtain your I twenty or your DS uh, twenty nineteen, and I'm going to uh, briefly explain what each one is uh, uh, in a later slide. Then, uh, paying your I nine one fee. Again, this is the beginning of the process. Completing your DS-160 form, uh, scheduling your visa interview, then, of course, attending your visa interview. Uh, some tips that you have to consider when you attend the visa interview. And then 10 facts about the whole process. So if at the end of the day, you don't remember anything from this presentation, hopefully these uh, 10 facts will uh, stick with you. Uh, now, uh, you, your uh, I-20 or DS-2019. So. Uh, what, what's the difference? The I-20 is for F students. F students are the ones who come to the U.S. for the whole duration of the program, right? So you come to the U.S. to study for uh, for four years or two years or three years if you're getting your master's degree, right? And your DS-2019 is for J students. J students are usually students who come to the U.S. for part of the program. Maybe you are an exchange student and you come to the U.S. to study for one semester, one year, or maybe up to two years. But uh, basically, you are not uh, you're not here completing your program. Basically, you're just here uh, um, starting like part of your program, right? Now, uh, once you get uh, your I-20 or this one, um, 2019, what you can use this for is, of course, to pay your I-901 fee, and then uh, you can apply for a non-immigrant visa, uh, right? So this is what this whole thing is about. Then once, uh, you know, you, you need to enter the U.S. When you get to the, the uh, point of entry in the U.S., be uh, Atlanta, New York, whatever it is, uh, you will be asked for your I-20. So make sure you have a copy with you when you're traveling um, because the, the, the officer at the point of entry will ask you for your copy of your I-20. And then again, once you're in the U.S., uh, you can, of course, apply for a driver's license. Uh, you know, you can have uh, 
works on campus, right? So you're, you're going to need a social security number. And then, uh, you know, whenever you graduate, you can apply for OPT or academic training and year 20 or DS 2019, uh, we need to, um, again, we need to modify the, um, this document uh, in order to reflect your st status in the country, right? Now, uh, this is a sample of an I-20. So whenever you receive the I-20, this is what you're gonna be looking at. The CVS ID, which is on the uh, top left corner of the document, uh, it is a unique ID that is only for you, right? So, and you're gonna need this ID when you complete your forms, when you pay the I-91 fee and when you complete the DS-164 as well. Uh, so, you know, just remember uh, remember that you, that number is unique for you and you're gonna need it through the process. Um, the school code, uh, what you can see uh, here in the middle of the screen as well, that's something that uh, you will have to consider also when you're applying, because uh, when you apply and you go to the visa interview, you you only go to the visa interview for one school. So basically, if you're accepted to four or five or six schools, uh, you can only pick one when you go to the visa interview. You can go to the visa inter interview and say, oh, yeah, I was accepted to uh, these five schools. And I still don't know which one I'm going to go to, right? So you need to know which school you're going to go to. Um, then, okay, of course, you know, your DSO or PDSO, you know, the, the, basically the person who, who issues the I-20 needs to sign it. And then you have to sign it as well. Um, and then the DS-2019 uh, is pretty similar. I mean, uh, you know, the information is like uh, in different places of the form, but you pretty much have the same information, right? It needs to be signed. It has the CV ID. In this case, it's in the top right corner instead of the top left corner. But the information that you see on the document is pretty much the same. Uh, now, so um, once you get your I-20 or DS-2019, uh, 2019, you have to pay the I-901 fee. Basically, this is the first step, right? So you go to that website, and uh, I have a few uh, screenshots for you uh, at a later slide that shows you um, what the website looks like so you know you are in the right spot, right? So if you're an F student, basically you have your an, an I-20, uh, you're, um, you're gonna pay for uh, the F uh, um, I-901 fee, which is $350, right? And then if you're a J student, it's $220. Then, let's see, we have someone in the chat. Okay. Um, then um, once you have uh, your I-20, again, or DS-2019, you will uh, need that to complete the, um, the I-901 fee form. Uh, so you need your CVS ID, again, or your I-20 or DS-2019, last name and given name, and you can check your passport for that. And again, we're gonna see, even though probably everyone has a passport and everyone knows what a passport looks like, we're gonna see how CVS reads your passport. So you know that you're, uh, you're filling out the information correctly, right? And then your date of birth. Your date of birth needs to be entered as month, day, year. I know most of the world, they do day, month, year, right? When you, we talk, we're talking about dates, but make sure that when you plug in your uh, date of birth uh, into the CVS form, you start with the month, then the day, then the year, right? Okay, so say you go to the, to the I-901 fee website, this is where you're gonna land. This is the landing page. This is uh, when you type that on, on Google or you just you type the whole website, this is where you're gonna be, right? So then we're gonna click on pay I-901 fee at the top. And uh, this is the page that follows, right? So I said that before, <clears throat> you need your service ID, you need uh, your last name, given name, and then your date of birth, month, date, and year, right? And um, if for some reason, while you are completing the form, you make a mistake, don't fill out a new form. If you see here on the on the right hand side, you can contact CVS and they will uh, they can edit the form for you. You don't have to submit a new one. Uh, and now, okay, so this is what a passport looks like. This is a fake passport, right? So this is a, a made up passport from the country of Utopia, uh, which of course doesn't exist. But this is the way we read the passports, uh, or we are you know CVS or DSOs read the passports, right? So we go by the machine readable zone at the bottom. So you have uh, P for passport, of course, then a little bracket, UTO, the first three letters of your country, and then your last name, uh, in this case, Ericsson, right? So you see, then you see two little brackets. If there are two brackets, that means that the next uh, name is gonna be a last name, right? If, the, if it is only one bracket, it means that this person has two last names. Like for example, uh, Ericsson, um, Ericsson Johnson, right? So if it is Ericsson, bracket Johnson, that means that those are two last names. But if it's Ericsson, bracket, bracket, Anna, 
that means that we are merging into the first name in this case. That's why you see one bracket after Anna for Maria. So in this case, this person is this person's last name is uh, Ericsson, and then the person has a first name which is Anna and a middle name which is Maria, right? Uh, I know it is uh, it sounds uh, silly and simple, but um, in some countries, for example, the passport, if you read the, the actual passport, not the machine readable zone, they have the whole name in a single, um, uh, under under a single um, uh, subject, right? So it's just, it's just it's like name and it's everything together. So sometimes it's hard to identify which one is the na last name and which one is the first name. Uh, now, filling out your DS-160 form. Uh, in this case, um, the DS-160 form, and we're going to have some screenshots as well, so you, um, I can show you some of the, the screens of the DS-160 form. You're going to need your I-20, uh, your passport, and, and personal information, of course, and then your arrival address. The arrival address can be um, the university address. You don't have to have a, a or, or let's say, you don't have to have a, um, a, an, an apartment ready or anything like that. Right, so you can just say the university address for your arrival address, right? And then figure out your housing later. Um, hopefully you know where, where you're gonna be staying uh, before you arrive, right? But in this case, uh, your arrival address is the campus address. Contact person in the US, again, that could be can be something from the university, could be your student service, service advisor, for example, right? And then of course you need to submit a passport size photo. And we're gonna see that, uh, why? We're gonna see why in a minute, right? Um, so once you complete your DS-160 form, again, uh, with all this information, uh, this is what the, the, the website looks like once you go to, um, anyway, once you go to the, the website to submit your DS-160 form. So you go to the website on the top, and this is the landing page, right? So uh, location where you'll be applying for, for this visa, that's a list of countries. So you just click on the drop-down menu, select the country where you're located and where you're going to be uh, um, doing your visa interview, right? And then uh, save this number. This number is your application ID. Again, if there is, if you have to contact uh, the uh, Department of Homeland Security of the US uh, for anything related to, to your DS-160 form, uh, you're gonna need this number as a, uh, since it's your I, um, application reference number, okay? Uh, you know, again, as I said before, personal information, you know, uh, you need to fill out all this, um, all the mandatory fields uh, in the form. Um, again, more personal information uh, of, you know, everything needs to pretty much match your passport, right? So if you have a government issued ID uh, and the passport uh, in the information in the passport looks maybe different in your, in your ID, um, for example, you know, I know in some countries uh, there is like different ways of spelling a last name, right? So maybe your last name is spelled one way on an, a government issue ID and one way or a different way. Uh, on your passport, you always follow your passport, right? So you just fill out all the information, um, all the mandatory information from the form following your passport. Uh, again, CBS information, you're going to use your I-20 for this, right? And again, as I said before, you're going to have to pick the school you want to attend uh, once, you, uh, once you're filling out this form, all right? You can go to the visa interview uh, with uh, more than one, one school, right? So uh, let's move on again. More serious information that you have to fill out, right? The name of the school and all that. And then um, this is where you are, you will upload that passport size photo that I mentioned before, and you're gonna see why in a minute, right? So here we have uh, this person's uh, profile. Of course, this is a fake profile; uh, it's not a real person. And then um, once everything is correct, you know, you check all the information. You make sure that everything is correct to the best of your knowledge make sure that the information that you submit is accurate, right? You don't want to submit fake information. Then when you go to your visa interview, if some for some reason they ask you a question that um, should be on your DS-160 form, right? And it doesn't match what you said on your DS-160 form, that's a problem, right? It is likely you'll be denied your visa because you lied on your DS-160 form. So make sure that all the information is accurate, double check everything, triple check everything and make sure that it's accurate to the best of your knowledge. Uh, now, once you complete the DS-160 form, this you're gonna get uh, a page where you have to sign sub and submit, and then you're gonna get your receipt. Uh, your receipt is what you see here on the right-hand side. You have to print that out, right? You have to print it out because you have to bring it with you to your visa interview, right? So make sure you don't uh, miss that. 
Okay, so now uh, we pay the I-901 fee and we completed the DS-160 form. Now it's time to schedule the visa interview. And this is what you're going to do. The first step is to find the, the, visa, the embassy or the consulate closest to you, right? So we're going to go to uh, www.usembassy.gov and then we're going to find the country we are currently located in, right? Then uh, select the U.S. consulate or embassy where you want to attend your visa. For example, in some countries, there is only one embassy. Um, so you're just going to pick that one embassy. Some other countries in India, for example, there is one embassy and there is a lot of consulates. Uh, in um, Again, in other countries, there, there is no, just because of political reasons, there is no, no embassy. So you may be applying as a, a third country national. That means that you're applying as someone who is uh, not from the country where the consulate is located, right? And, and that's okay, that's okay. Third country nationals can apply to, um, to uh, for, for visa interviews in another country, right? That, that's allowed. Uh, again, so once you find the, the consulate or embassy where you want to attend the interview, uh, you're gonna click on uh, where it says visas, right? And then non-immigrant visa. Again, just remember this, you're applying for a non-immigrant visa, right? Uh, then you're gonna click where it says global support services, the wording may be different from country to country, but the process is pretty much standard. So uh, you just have to kind of, it is pretty intuitive, yeah, right? So you just have to find uh, the, the links that to follow in order to, to, to schedule your visa appointment. And then uh, you will have to create your account. And then of course, pay, pay for the visa interview, interview fee. And um, I'm just gonna show you a few screenshots. So again, you know you are in the right place where, once you are completing all these steps. Right, so this is the usembassy.gov website. Enter country, in this case, uh, I selected uh, Saudi Arabia when I was completing this um, all the, or, or taking all these uh, screenshots. So in Saudi Arabia, there is a, uh, an embassy in Riyadh, and also there's a consulate in uh, Tahran. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name, uh, but uh, again, so you have two options if you are in Saudi Arabia, right? Let's say we go to Riyadh. Now, here, as I said before, we're gonna we're gonna, we're going to click where it says visas. You can see there on the on the top, there's a lot of options. It says visas, uh, U.S. citizen services, a relationship, business, you know, all that. So we click on visas, and then we click on uh, non-immigrant visas. Read more, and we will be taken to the next uh, page. Here, we will click on global support services, right? And as I said before, it could the wording could vary from country to country, but the process is pretty much standard. And we will have to create an account, right? In this case, for, for Saudi Arabia, this is what the website looks like. It could look different, again, from, from another country, but uh, we will always will land on a page similar to this one, right? So here we click on create account. Of course, since uh, I'm not applying for a for interview, uh, for a visa interview, uh, I can't move, move forward, but uh, the, the information that you will fill out is pretty much uh, you know, all personal information, uh, and then you will have to pay for the um, for the interview fee. The interview fee is $160, and you can pay. Uh, they have, like, different methods of paying, uh, again, depending on the country. So once you pay for uh, the um, uh, the visa interview, the $160, you know, you'll get your, your visa interview date. And something to keep in mind is that you can actually, uh, if, say, the start date for for your uh, program is August uh, 15, right? And then you get your interview on August uh, 20th, right? So the that's a problem because that's five days after the classes start. If you are within a month of classes starting within 30 days, then you will have to uh, call the embassy and they will be, if they have it, they can give you an emergency appointment. Right. So if you are within 30 days of your uh, of the start of your program and you are um, your visa original visa interview is past the start date, you can actually or you may be eligible for a, an emergency appointment. Not always. You know, may, maybe the embassy is fully booked and they can give you the, the emergency appointment, but uh, it is worth a try. If they have any appointments, uh, you may be eligible for one anyway. So we get the visa appointment, you know, we pay the fee, we get the visa appointment. So we are pretty much done with all the paperwork. We pay the I-901 fee, 
uh, we completed the, the DS-160 form and then we scheduled our visa interview, right? So that's kind of like, I would say the, the boring part of the presentation and maybe the boring part of the process. Now, what comes next is basically preparing for the visa interview. So we're just gonna go through um, a couple a couple of things that you have to consider, you know, what to bring to the visa interview, uh, what not to bring, uh, possible uh, interview questions. Then some tips and suggestions for you, something again to keep in mind. And then at the end, 10 facts about the visa process. And again, hopefully this is something that will, you will um, remember these 10 facts. Uh, if, if nothing from the presentation like stuck with you, hopefully these 10 facts will be the things that you remember. Okay, so what to bring? You will need to bring your I-20 or DS 2019 issued by the school, right? Issued by Trinity University, you will receive the I-20 or the DS 2019. So you will have to bring um, a copy with you. Right, and everything needs to be in paper form. You won't be able to have your phone. You won't be able to have your um, a tablet, computer, anything like that. Make sure to print everything out because you will have to present these forms in as, as a paper copy, right? So I-20 or DS 2019, a letter of admission from the university, right? And uh, if you received a, um, a letter like a scholarship, bring the, the scholarship letter as well. They may not ask you for the scholarship letter, but you just have it just in case. You know, receiving a scholarship is always uh, a, a, a good thing, right? Because it shows that you are um, you're qualified for, for some funding when, when attending the university. So um, you have to bring a valid passport. That means that the passport is not about to expire, right? If you have a passport that is um, pretty close to expiring within like six months of uh, expiring, you will have to renew it uh, before you go to your visa interview, right? Um, so make sure your passport is valid for at least a couple of years. Now, uh, financial documents or an, an and or letter from your sponsor. Basically, this is for you to show the visa um, officer that you have enough fundings to uh, study in the US for one academic year, right? So, and this is something that you know because we request that from you when you uh, apply to the university, right? When, whenever we issue your I-20, we always tell you, we need your financial statement to issue your I-20. Now, um, the sponsor letter, if, if you're like funding yourself, if the financial statement is in your name, no need for a sponsor letter. But if it is your parents, uh, your um, uncles, uh, and whoever, grandparents, whoever they are, uh, you will need the sponsor letter, right? Then English proficiency proof, if applicable, if you're from a country where, um, you know, we don't require English proficiency uh, from, for example, you are from, from Australia or you are from the Bahamas, something like that. We, uh, you don't have, of course, you don't have to uh, bring with you your English proficiency test. But say you are from a country like uh, India or Nepal, uh, where we do require an English proficiency test, then you would have to bring it with you. Again, the visa officer may not ask you for this, but uh, it is useful to have it just in case uh, to show that you have the minimum level of English to actually, um, to actually you know, attend the university, right? Now, uh, CVS payment, you need to, whenever you complete or you pay for your I-901 fee, you get a receipt. Make sure to print that out and bring it with you as well. Now, and the DS-160 form confirmation page as well, right? So we, uh, we talked about this. Uh, whenever you complete the DS-160 form, you get a, uh, like a, like a receipt, right? Like a confirmation page, you print that out. And this is very important. I should highlight this on the presentation. The I-901 fee uh, payment page and the DS-160 form uh, confirmation page, these are mandatory. So make sure to print those out and bring with you uh, to the visa interview. And of course, a passport size photo. This is the, pass the, the photo, the picture that, that is going to go on your passport, right? Now, these are the, the, I would say, the mandatory documents that you have to bring with you and you cannot forget. Other documents that you could bring with you but are very likely not going to be requested from the visa officer are uh, transcripts, diplomas, uh, degrees, certificates from school, or any like standardized tests like uh, SAT or ACT, something like that, right? Now, if it is something that your school requires, for example, we are test optional, so we don't require SAT or ACT, but if you're applying to a school that it is a mandatory admission document like your SAT or ACT, you may want to actually bring that with you but uh, if not, again, uh, very likely it's not required. Again, your visa interview is about three minutes. It's no longer than three, two or three minutes, maybe four minutes. It depends on, on, on the questions that you get asked, right? Uh, so, of course, the visa officer is not going to have 
time to actually see all these documents. The visa officer will uh, focus on the interview itself, not on your documents. But again, these documents are important because they have to file. They have to file your I-901 fee. You have, they have to file your, your DS-160 form. And of course, uh, you know, uh, they need to see your I-20. Uh, now, these are prohibited items. Uh, basically, what I mentioned before, just bring those items. Uh, but I'm just going to mention uh, these items here uh, just in case, because uh, you're not allowed to go into the embassy with these items. So make sure to leave them at home. If you are driving to the to the embassy, leave them in your car, or um, you won't be able to to go walk in with it, with these items because there is no like uh, storage rooms or anything like that at the embassy for them to keep these items uh, for you. So any like uh, backpacks or big uh, purses or or or, or large uh, like duffel bags, anything like that. You can only have like a like a small bag where you can just carry your documents, right? Other than that, uh, you can't have anything larger than that. Now, um, food and beverages, of course, you can go in with uh, any food. Uh, weapons, that's pretty much, um, you know, you would think like, of course, weapons, right? But, you know, it's I think it's worth mentioning just in case. Tools, of course, you don't need a, a screwdriver or or anything like that, you know, when you go to your visa interview. So make sure to not have any anything like that. Uh, of course, oils, um, aerosols, and this means, means like if you have your perfume with you or if you have your um, uh, deodorant or something like that, like, you know, like a spray deodorant, just make sure that you don't have anything with you like that in your in your little purse or anything, right? Uh, anything that can start a fire, of course, that's, again, uh, that's a given. And as I said before, no electronics, no phones, no cameras, no tablets, no computers. So all the papers that you bring with you to the visa interview, they need to be printed out. Right now, moving, moving moving on. So these are some possible questions that you may be asked, right? And this is where I, I would ask you to pay um, more attention, right? Uh, so one question they, uh, the visa officer may ask you, why do you want to study in the US, right? So, and we're gonna go through some tips, as I said before, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go through like some of those like facts that I mentioned before. And I'm, I'm, I may be repeating some of this information, but again, I just hope that you remember all this, right? So why do you want to study in the US? This, this question uh, can, be, can be tricky, right? So I, I, I don't want to give you an answer because each answer should be personal. And this is something very important. There is no cookie cutter answer that everyone can say and everyone and that will be the right answer and everyone will get the visa because they're giving this answer right if everyone gives the same answer the visa officers will will you know catch that and they will be like okay so these people are clearly uh you know they're being coached and everyone is saying or maybe everyone got the same answer from the internet right so don't give uh don't give it like a standard answer they give a personal answer why do you want to study in the us for example, uh, someone may want to study in the U.S. because they, they, um, you know, there's a program in uh, in the U.S. that is not offered uh, in their in um, where they live, right? For example, um, say marine biology, right? So marine biology. Not all countries have marine biology because marine biology, you know, if you if your country is like landlocked, uh, it's very rare that your country is going to have a marine biology program, right? But maybe you're going to, you know, the U.S. You know. Troy University, we offer marine biology, and we're one of the few universities in the U.S. with this program, right? So we do have we do have a lot of interest in this program just because you know it's such a again such a unique unique program. So if your country is landlocked, of is very likely no university will offer marine biology as a program. So why do you want to study in the U.S.? Well, I want to study in the U.S. because I want to study marine biology, and this is a program that is not offered in my country. And then you can just go on, you know, you can explain why you want to study that because. It is weird that once you study marine biology and you go back to your home country, there is nothing you can do there. Again, why? It's a landlocked, a landlocked country, right? But maybe you can you can see like, okay, so I want to study this because I have a plan uh, of, I don't know, uh, moving to Australia and working there at, with this facility or this company, you know. Again, so you're giving them a comprehensive answer, an answer that is unique to you. And that is, you know, something that the, the U.S. Um, or, or the visa officer can uh, can see that that's a unique answer. That's something that that you are passionate about, and that's something that that is not again an answer that everyone would would give, right? 
Uh, so, and we're gonna talk about more about like unique answers uh, through the through the presentation, right? But anyway, so other questions that you can be asked is why did you choose this particular university? Again, personal answer. Why did you choose this, this university? Maybe you apply to ten universities, say, right? You apply to ten universities and you got accepted into four universities, and then out of those four universities, then uh, say you want to study business, right? So you looked at all the other universities and you see that, for example, Troy University is the only one of the four universities that you got accepted that has an AACSB accreditation, right? Which is one of the most uh, prestigious business accreditations a university can have. So you can tell the university, you can tell the visa officer, well, I chose uh, Troy University because I applied to this many universities. I got this many acceptances. And Troy University uh, is the, you know, I want to study business. And out of the four universities that I got accepted, Troy University has the best business program, right? Um, that's just an example. That's something that you, you can say. But again, it needs to be a unique answer for you. If everyone gives the same answer, it is likely that um, the, the visa officer will, will see through that and will deny your visa just because the visa officer will know you are just giving them a standard answer, right? Uh, and then, okay, other questions, you know, where is the school? Of course, you have to know where you go, right? So you can be like, oh, true university. Yeah, it's located in the state of Alabama. I chose this university because this, uh, the state of Alabama has uh, warm weather year round, right? And, um, you know, and that's kind of, it, it resembles the weather from my home country. So that's what I'm looking for, right? So you can give an answer like that. Uh, anyway, so you can see here all the other questions that you may be asked. There may be more questions, but these are kind of like the most, um, uh, the probably the most like uh, standard questions that you may be asked. Um, maybe the, the visa officer will come out and ask you something completely random, uh, but this is why you have to be prepared to answer pretty much any questions, right? Uh, so let's move on. Anyway, I'm, I'm just gonna read these questions out loud, but uh, again, I don't have a specific answer for all these questions. As I said before, the answer to all these questions has to be personal, right? So um, how did you learn about it? Basically, how did you learn about your university? What are you going to study? Uh, how did you choose this major? Uh, how many other universities were you admitted to? You know, I mentioned this before. And why not those? Basically, uh, if, you, if you tell them that you were admitted to four or five universities, they may, they may ask you, so why did you choose this particular university over all these other universities that you also got an acceptance letter from, right? Anyway. Okay, so funding related questions. This is again, pretty straightforward. You have to show funding for one academic year. And of course, you know this because this is what we require from you when we issue your admission, right? We require funding for one academic year. Uh, and then you have to be able to explain, you know, how you're going to get funded. If it is your parents, uh, a family member, you know, grandparents, uh, maybe you're getting a grant, a loan, a scholarship from your government, could be anything, right? So you have to be able to explain uh, where your funding is coming from, who your sponsors are, and maybe again, they may ask you, okay, so after your first year, so I see that you have funding for one year. What's your plan after your first year? Is your government still funding you after the first year? Is your grant still giving you money after the first year? Uh, are your parents still you know, funding you? So you should be able to explain that. And this is something, again, important, because for example, if they ask you, uh, so who's funding your education? And you say, my parents. And they ask you, what do they do for a living? What do your parents do for a living? And you say, they have a business. Okay. And as I said before, we're going to see more of these like, tips later at a later slide. But if you give them answers like that, you're not giving them any information, right? If you say, uh, if they ask you who is sponsoring your education or your, you know, your expenses, who's paying for your expenses when you move to the U.S., you have to give them a more comprehensive answer, right? You have to tell them, for example, um, and again, this is an example. You don't have to say this. Then um, my parents are um, are funding my my parents funding my education education. My parents are paying for all my expenses. You don't have to wait for them to actually ask you. Oh, what do they do? No, you can just go ahead and explain to them that your parents are, are paying for your expenses, right? And your parents have a business where they employ, you know, uh, 20, 25 people. 
right? So uh, that also maybe your parents, they have uh, they have property. So they, that's an extra source of income that they have that they will use uh, to, to pay for expenses. So do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see what I'm doing? I'm giving the visa officer an, an answer that they can uh, they can um, they can picture how my education will be paid for. I'm not just telling them my parents have a business, right? I'm just telling them they have a business, and this is how big the business is. This is how they how much income they get from the business. This is um, uh, again the extra sources of income that my parents also have that they can that can help uh, paying for my education and my expenses when I move to the U.S. So. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, touch on this topic of short answers uh, at a later slide, but uh, that's kind of like the way you have to approach the visa interview. You have to be a, an active interviewee. You can be a passive interviewee. A passive interviewee is a person who simply answers the questions that um, you get asked, right? Again, who's funding for your education? My parents, period, right? That's not good. That's a passive interviewee. An active interviewee is who's paying for your education? My parents are paying for my education. They have a business. They have this many employees. The business, um, you know, they have like three locations in, in my city. You know, okay. So you give them like a more um, uh, comprehensive answer, right? So you're being an active interviewee. Now, I see some of you like popping questions in the chat. As I said before, you can pop all your questions in the chat. I will go through the questions uh, after I'm done with the whole presentation. Uh, so what are your, your future plans? And this is very important because this is one of the main reasons visas are denied. When you go to the visa interview, the visa officer will have to be sure that when you complete your education, you will return, return to your home country, right? So. Uh, why is this important? Because you have a non-immigrant visa, right? So a non-immigrant visa is a visa that is granted for only a period of time. Say you get an F1 visa to study a bachelor's degree, that is a visa for four years, maybe five years, right? Uh, sometimes it's a visa for two years, right? But um, you can, of course, like extend it, right? Uh, as long as your, your uh, I-20 form is valid, again, for F students, uh, you can stay in the country. Right, but say for example, your I-20 uh, is valid, right? Uh, but your visa expired. If you leave the country with a valid I-20 and an expired visa, to return to your home, to the to uh, the U.S. to finish your studies, you need to get a new visa. As long as your visa is valid, you can come in and out with your valid I-20 as well. Uh, but anyway, so one of the main reasons visas are uh, are denied is because the visa officer does not believe that you will be going back home when you graduate. Basically, the visa, visa officer believes that you have an intent to migrate to the US, right? So basically you're using your F1 visa to migrate to the US. So you have to be able to show, and this is a key word that everyone uses, that you have ties. Ties, basically something that ties you, right? To your, back, uh, to your home country, something that, that will make you return to your home country. So you have to be able to prove that. Basically, it could be that you have your, your family, right? That you have maybe you have property, you have a car, uh, maybe your job is paying for your education and you know your job, whenever you graduate, you have to go back to, to your job, right? Uh, in some countries, for example, uh, the, the, that offer like scholarships to, to students, they will have the students, uh, they will pay for the student expenses when they come to the US, but then they have to go to back to their home country to basically repay this, uh, this scholarship that they received from the government by working, right? So you have to go back to your home country and work for like two or three or four years, basically kind of like to repay for the scholarship that you received from the government, right? So um, that's something that, you know, they can, that can tie you back to your home country. But again, this is going to be something personal as well. Uh, so there is no, no standard answer for these questions. This is something that you will have to, uh, you will have to basically uh, come up with, uh, basically think, okay, so when I go to my visa interview, what is it that, um, that, that uh, will make me return to my home country, right? So again, family, job, a property, something like that. 
uh, for uh, J1 applicants, again, this is a very briefly, uh, you know, J, uh, J1s are not like traditional students because they're not staying in the country for, for the, uh, the duration of the program. Basically, this is a, a either like a one month, uh, one month, uh, one semester, uh, one year, two years, maybe tops, right? So uh, you're not like a four year student, right? Uh, then uh, you will need financial proof for the duration of your program. Uh, it's not just for one academic year. So you need to show uh, funding for, for, you know, if you're coming to the U.S. for two years, you need to show funding for two years, right? Um, and then uh, you need to emphasize whenever you go to your visa interview, you know, the length of your program, you know, how many how many months, months or years uh, you're going to be studying in the U.S., why you chose to study in the U.S., you know, for example, uh, we have some partnerships with different, different universities. So, uh, you know, that's something you can say. My university uh, currently has a partnership with Troy University, and that's why I'm I'm going to 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 the U.S. to Troy to to basically study for one semester or one year or something like that, right? And then um, there's a question they may ask you as well. You know, how you're going to use your education to when you go back home? Um, but again, usually for for J applicants, the visa interview is not as um, uh, and this is just uh, statistically speaking. I'm not saying that it is easy, but it is usually not as um, uh, strict that as it is for F1 students, right? Uh, now, some tips and suggestions. And we're getting close to the end of the presentation. I see that there's a lot of questions being asked in the, in the chat, and I will address uh, those questions. As long as there are questions related to the presentation and the visa process, I'll be happy to answer all these questions. Uh, now, so tips and suggestions. Suggestions, I'm sorry. Uh, so dress appropriately. This means that uh, just keep in mind, you are a student. You're not a businessman, but you're not also a, you know, you're not a skater, right? So you're not, so dress like like a student would dress, you know, just wear like a nice pair of pants. Uh, you know, you can wear like uh, skirts if you're, um, if you like, uh, wear like a nice shirt, right? But uh, don't, don't wear like shorts and flip flops, for example, to your visa interview, right? Uh, so you should dress appropriately, dress nicely, you know, the, the way you dress is very important. And again, this is something we're going to see in a little bit when I cover the 10 facts about the visa, um, the visa process, that you can be denied for pretty much anything. The visa officer can deny your visa for pretty much any reason. And we're going to cover that in a minute as well. Anyway, anyway, dress appropriately, dress nicely, right? Uh, of course, arrive with plenty of time. You don't want to be late. If you're late, you miss your visa appointment. Remember, the visa appointment is $160, right? So you don't want to waste $160, right? So make sure to arrive. It's better to arrive 30 minutes late. Uh, I'm sorry, 30 minutes early than 30 minutes late, right? So you don't want to miss your appointment. Now, uh, try to remain calm and composed. Uh, what do I mean by this? It is common or it's normal to be a bit nervous. It is a high stakes situation, right? Again, you paid a lot of money to be there. You waited a long time to get your visa appointment. So it is it is a high stakes situation for you. And it is, it is normal to be nervous. If you are overly ner nervous, now that might be a problem. So that's what I'm saying. Trust just to remain remain uh, calm through the whole, through the interview. Uh, just, you know, the visa officer is a, a normal person, just like you and me, right? Uh, so, this is, this is some of the things that you have to, if you're well prepared for the interview, if you know all the, your information, it is, uh, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be that nervous, right? So again, just remember to follow all these like steps and all the questions that they may be asked, uh, you may be asked, um, and you should be, again, you shouldn't be uh, that nervous, again. Um, remember key points and answers uh, for your questions and answer naturally. Uh, the, this means that, and again, I'm touching kind of like, I'm touching on this point uh, on the uh, bullet point below, that you don't have to memorize your answers, right? So, and this is, again, this is very important. And that's why I highlighted that part, you know, that's the only highlighted part on this page. Do not memorize your answers. Just think about it, right? So say um, you uh, you are, you're taking a class. Say you're taking a class uh, at your university or your high school and you have to give a presentation, right? And remember, I'm sure if you remember, it happened to me when I was when I was a student that I would like memorize my whole presentation, right? And then I will just maybe forget a word while I'm doing the presentation. I will forget a word through the presentation. And because I memorized it, I, I froze, 
you know, you get lost just because you have everything memorized, right? So just make sure you know your information and make sure you are able to, to um, provide that information to the visa officer as clearly and as um, concise as possible. But if you memorize it and you're just giving them the information like, like you're reading it from a script, first of all, they're gonna see through that. They're gonna see that you memorized that information unless you're a terrific actor, right? And you can actually memorize lines and deliver them uh, naturally, right? But chances are, you, you know, you may not be a good actor so <laughs> or actress, right? So make sure that the information that you know it and you're able to deliver it naturally. If you memorize the, the, um, the, the answers, again, you may forget a word and you may freeze and nothing else will come out of your mouth or um, the visa officer will see, will see through that and will see that you actually memorized your answers and you actually, you know, all these, uh, these questions are that something that maybe you read online or, or something, someone told you to give these answers, right? Um, anyway, let's, they, lately, uh, they, lastly, make sure to um, be able to discuss uh, articulately, right? Uh, and again, this is pretty much what we covered on the past slides. The program that you, the school that you choose and the program, uh, your ties to your home country, basically, what is it that is gonna take you back to your home country? Uh, your sponsor's occupation, you know, uh, again, your parents, grandparents, whoever is sponsoring you, what do they do for a living and how are they going to pay for your expenses in the U.S., right? Um, the scholarships, funding opportunities. Again, if you are receiving a scholarship from the university, make sure to mention that. Make sure to have paperwork that shows that you're receiving that scholarship. That's always good. And then post-study plans. Again, once you graduate, what's your plan? Your plan should be go back to my home country and whatever your plan is, open a business, uh, you know, if you are a computer science, uh, you know, work for, for an IT company, whatever it is, make sure to have an idea that, and it doesn't have to be like, you know, everyone, everyone's plans like change, right? Um, you Maybe you, your plan is to do something now, and once you graduate, you find out you want to do something else. But you have to have a plan when you go to the visa interview uh, for after you graduate, right? So make sure to, to be able to remember these points uh, once you are preparing for your visa interview. And as I said before, we're almost done. The 10 facts about the visa process, this is the last part of the presentation, and then I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, so hopefully you will, you will remember these 10 facts um, once you are preparing for your visa interview. Now, start the visa process early. What do I mean by this? You can, start the, you can schedule your visa interview as early as 365 days before the beginning of classes. It used to be 120 days, and now recently the US government expanded that to 365 days, basically one whole year before the beginning of classes. So you have plenty of time. So as soon as you receive your I-20, that day, start the visa process, pay the I-91 fee, complete the DS-160 form, schedule a visa interview. Basically, if you can do everything within 20, uh, 24 to 48 hours, that'd be amazing, right? So you start the visa process as early as you can. Now, uh, as I mentioned this before, how you present yourself is important, the way you dress. Now, how you present yourself, it is not only the way you dress, it's the way you uh, talk to the visa officer, is the way your hair looks like, right? Is your demeanor, right? So if you are disrespectful to the visa officer when you're talking, very likely your visa will be denied, right? Again, presenting yourself is not just the way you dress, it is everything. It's the way the visa officer sees you, right? Again, maybe you, maybe you again, I'm not saying that you do. I'm just saying maybe someone smells bad, right? Maybe you forgot to put on uh, deodorant before going to the visa uh, interview. So, but that might be something that is like off-putting for the visa officer, right? And uh, maybe they think that just because you uh, you don't smell good, or maybe like your hair is all messy, or maybe you're not dressing well, you're not taking this seriously. You're not taking the process seriously. So. Make sure that the way you present yourself shows that you are taking this process seriously, right? Now, number three, uh, be prepared with the recommended documents. Extra documents are not important. What do I mean by this? We um, we talked about the recommended documents. I-20 or DS-2019, right? I-20 or DS-2019. DS-160 confirmation page. I-901 fee uh, payment page or, or, or receipt, right? Uh, passport, uh, admission letter, 
And then uh, if necessary, also, you know, your uh, scholarship letter. But again, those are like the most important documents. As I said before, you can go back to the previous um, uh, to the previous screen where I cover the, the documents that you have to bring. And you can uh, you can see that uh, the documents that you have to bring, right? And again, as I said before, all those documents need to be in as a paper copy, right? Now, uh, the interview will be conducted in English. So if, if you think that your English uh, is good, but maybe not good enough, uh, say at a conversational level right now, uh, I recommend you to uh, start practicing. Uh, maybe if you want, you can take uh, you can take some English classes to be prepared for it. But just remember, the interview will be conducted in English. Uh, now, the university the university has no authority to contact the embassy or consulate on behalf of the student. What do I mean by this? Uh, many times we receive uh, emails from students saying that the embassy denied their uh, their visa. And to see if there is, uh, we can call the embassy or we can contact the embassy to uh, vouch for that student. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a direct line or a contact with the embassy. We have no authority to uh, decide who receives or who doesn't receive a visa. So, unfortunately, there's the if your if your visa is denied, uh, there is nothing we can do to convince uh, the the embassy or to change their mind. Right? Um, denials are difficult to overcome. Number six. What does this mean? Uh, this means that once you get denied once, uh, it's very likely that the, the second time will be a bit harder for you to get a visa. Now, don't be discouraged. Uh, you can get, you can still get your visa. I've, we've had students who got denied like two, two times or three times, and they got their visa on their third time or their fourth time that you know they attended the interview. It could happen, but it is important that when you go to a second visa interview after being denied that you present different information. Basically, you're denied for a reason, right? So you're denied because you were not able to show ties back home. You are denied because uh, you were not able to show enough proof uh, of financial funding to study in the US. Maybe you were denied because you forgot a document, one of the documents that I said are important for you, right? Uh, important for you to bring, like the DS-160 form confirmation page. Maybe you're denied because you were not convincing that you were going to uh, study in the US. Maybe you were denied because the visa officer thought that you are just getting this visa to enter the US and to migrate. And you, you have no intentions of like studying in the US. Now, if you go to a second visa interview, you need to be able to show different evidence that proves the visa officer wrong. Of course, you're not gonna go to the visa interview and, and to tell them, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Right, so don't say that. But you have to go in showing like different evidence that the first time that you were denied, it was um, again it was a mistake that uh, that you have proved that you are actually a legit student who is planning on attending the the U.S. to study and going back home. Right. So again, it is difficult to overcome a first denial, but it is possible. Denial reason. Uh, INA 214B. This covers everything. And this is something that I mentioned before. When you are denied, they can deny you for any reason. They can deny you again. Maybe they don't like the way you're dressed. Maybe the visa officer doesn't like uh, the way you're talking to them. Maybe you forgot a document. Maybe you're not, you didn't convince the visa officer that your intention to go to the US is to study, right? Could be anything. It doesn't matter. So if they, if they, want to deny your visa for any specific reason, they will give you the 214B denial. And this is something that I've heard before from students. They think that the visa officer will, uh, was going to deny them anyway because they, uh, they had this uh, 214B slip uh, paper ready to give, give it to them. No, again, they have this like printed out already for everyone, like for everyone, like they have a stack of papers and that's just the reason they give you. It's not like they they know already that they are denying you, right? Uh, again, because this is the, pretty much the only reason they use to deny someone. So they have this paperwork ready in case they have to deny someone. It's not they're ready for you in particular to deny you, right? So um, as I said before, the visa, the visa officer doesn't have that uh, their mind made up already about your case. You have to convince them, of course, when you go to the visa interview, the visa officer will ask you all these questions because you have to convince them that you deserve the visa uh, to study in the US, right? 
but they're not, you're not automatically denied the second you open your mouth. They, they will give you a good, uh, they will give you a fighting chance, right? They'll give you a, a good chance for you to prove that you are a legit student who wants to study in the US, right? Uh, but anyway, again, so the, the reason 214B is a denial that covers everything and it is the, typically the denial that everyone gets. Um, and then I mentioned this before when I was talking about short answers, don't give one word answers when you go to your interview. This is extremely important as well. This is one of the most important points that I'm going to mention right now. Be an active interviewer, uh, interviewee. Uh, interviewee, of course, the person who is be interviewed, right? So be an active interviewee. Don't be a passive interviewee, right? So when they ask you something, don't just answer that question. Give them a good, comprehensive answer, right? And... Uh, I gave you an example. I gave you the example of the marine biology program, right? So if they ask you why you want to study in the US uh, and you tell them, oh, because the US has the best system of education. That's a very uh, you know, short answer. Again, it's not a one word answer, but it is a very short answer that doesn't give any information to the visa officer. Just tell them that, oh, the US has the best system of education and that's why I want to study there. That's nothing. Don't say that. That's not a good. That's not a good answer, right? So you tell them the program you want to study. You tell them what you want to do with your program. You know, um, again, could be if it is a program that is not offered in your home country and it is a program that the U.S. is known for, something related to like STEM, like sciences, uh, engineering, technology, right? Um, and something that you will be able to to use and be kind of like a, a one-of-a-kind worker in your home country, if you have this degree, that is a great reason, right? Um, but again, don't give them short answers. Don't give them vague answers. Again, telling them, I want to study in the US because the US has the best education. That, that's not a good answer, right? That's, that's a very vague answer. Just give them an answer that is specific to you. Hopefully this makes sense. And um, again, I see that there's a lot of questions in the chat that I will be answering later. But again, just remember this personal answers, comprehensive answers, and be an active interviewee, right? We're almost done. Number nine, decisions are final. This means that if you are approved, great, you're approved, nothing else you need to do, you'll get your stamp on your, on your passport and you'll be ready to travel to the US. If you are denied, that decision is also final. A denial cannot be appealed. You can apply again to go to another visa interview, pay the $160 again for the visa interview spot. But that decision, if the visa officer hands you a 214B uh, slip, and, uh, and that's it. That's, that's a, unfortunately, that's a denial, and there is no, no way to appeal that decision. You will have to do the process again. Your I-901 fee, that's still valid. Your I-20 is still valid. So what you have to do is complete the DS-164 again, and complete your, um, basically schedule your visa interview. That's what you have to do. But the I-901 fee, that's still valid. There's nothing else you need to do unless your I-20 gets canceled. Say um, your I-20 can be canceled if you do not defer your admission. Say you are denied for the fall semester and, and you want to apply for the spring semester. And you forget to tell your university that you wanted to defer your admission to the spring semester. Three months go by and you're like, oh, I, I want to defer my admission, right? By that time, your I-901 uh, fee payment is no longer valid because very likely your I-20 got canceled, right? So make sure that as soon as you know that you want to defer your admission because your visa got, got denied or for any reason for that matter, tell the university, tell your recruiter you want to defer your admission so we can do process that uh, on, on our system and we can update your I-20. Otherwise, if we have an old I-20, we will just cancel it and your I-901 fee will basically go nowhere and you will have to pay it again. Uh, and lastly, number 10, and this is the last point, and then I'll move on to the answer, uh, to the Q&A, &A, I'm sorry. Um, the record is for life. Say uh, in 2010, you applied for a tourist visa. And now in, two, in 2023, you're applying for a, uh, a, a student visa, right? A different kind of visa. You're applying for a student visa. And uh, if you were denied in 2010 for that tourist visa, and now you're applying 13 years later for a student visa, the visa officer will still know that 10 years or like 13 years ago, you got denied 
for a visa, for a tourist visa, right? Uh, this may have a, uh, may may or may not affect your chances of getting a um, getting a student visa, but just in case, you know, it could come up in the interview that hey, I see I see here that uh, 13 years ago you got denied a tourist visa, so you may may have a chance to explain what happened then, why your visa got denied 13 years ago. But again, just remember, if you were denied at some point uh, in your life of a visa. Uh, you, that will be uh, in your record, and the, the visa officer will be, will be able to see that, okay? Now, these are some helpful sites. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to share this presentation with you all, and um, I'm gonna sh I'm, I will share the recording, and I will also share the, the slides so you have them with you. Uh, you know, this is a lot of use useful information you can, uh, you can uh, use. Uh, you can see a general visa information, uh, the visa wait times, and also the um, US embassy or consulate locator, so you can find the closest embassy to you. Uh, so this is it, uh, this is the whole presentation. I'm gonna see the questions I see, there's like more than 40, 40 messages here. Um, okay, let's see. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. I see uh, we have some. I have some of my colleagues here uh, in the chat. Uh, Stephanie Park is one, one of them. Uh, so uh, thank you for taking care of some of the questions. Let's see. Again, I I'm ch I will just answer any questions related to the visa process. Okay, you got your I-20. Uh, where can I find uh, the video? I will email a link to this video to you all. I will upload this video to, um, I will upload the video to uh, YouTube and I will share the YouTube video with you all. Uh, okay, so the scholarship decision, that is, um, if you applied, if you received your scholarship, um, like, like say the IES scholarship, if you're a graduate student and you receive the TGS scholarship, there is a scholarship that is, uh, if you receive the scholarship letter, uh, that is a scholarship that is already granted to you. I mean, of course you have to apply, but uh, you, can, you, can, you can say that you received that scholarship. If you apply to a different scholarship, that I don't know. All the scholarships, they have like different deadlines. Uh, so. Uh, if you apply to a different scholarship, you may want to contact the, the um, I'm sure that, you know, on the on the scholarship website, there is a contact part. So contact them and see when the deadline for that particular scholarship is. How about ESL program? Uh, what, what do you mean ESL? ESL is already provided in H1. Yeah. Yeah. So the ESL, uh, if you want to study ESL, uh, you will get an I-20 for that. If you apply only to Troy and not many, uh, is there a negative effect on my interview? Uh, not necessarily. Again, it is it is very common to apply to more than one university, right? So um, if you only apply to Troy and they ask you, they may ask you, why did you only apply to Troy, right? Because again, it is very common to apply to more than one university, just because you know, uh, you know, your chances of being admitted to one university, depending on the university. Uh, like for example, what do you do if you got denied from Troy, right? So you're not you're not gonna go to any university. So basically, um, they may ask you. So why did you only apply to one university, knowing the risk that you could be denied, right? So you may have to explain that. Um, if you're planning to immigrate to Australia, then why not consider studying in Australia? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. Yeah, um, and this is just um, can you please give answer of this question. Yeah, that's a great question. And, and that's just a, an example that I gave, right? You don't have to give that specific answer, right? That's just an example that I gave that, that uh, you, can, you, can, you can explain to, to, the, to the visa officer why you chose that specific program. Uh, it doesn't have to be an answer that everyone gives, right? So that's, I just wanna point that out. Do not repeat the answers that I'm giving you today. Just have your own answers ready. 
Uh, is it possible to get fully funded scholarship or bachelor's degree? Uh, at the moment, we don't have any full scholarships, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so I see that some people are actually uh, answering some of the questions. So I really appreciate that. Yes, uh, financial statement is necessary for I-20. Um, let's see. Can we get a recording of the webinar? Of course. Uh, how many times uh, we need to wait for the I-20? Uh, the I-20, again, uh, as, whenever you apply, if you all your documents are ready, um, you, the, the admission takes between uh, two to three weeks, not more than that, as long as all your documents are ready. And I say two to three weeks because uh, you know there may be other um, other applicants in front of you that they need they need to be processed, right? So just to give you an idea, we process like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of applications applications each semester, right? The more applications we have, the longer it takes us to get to each individual application, right? Um, but again. If all your documents are ready, if you have your financial statement and everything submitted to your application, make sure to contact uh, our DSO uh, so she can she can issue your I-20. Um, uh, can you explain about the um, curriculum for bachelor in accounting, which I can explain as key points uh, to my interview? Uh, again, so you can all these like uh, the curriculum, you can find everything online, all, like the degree map, all the classes you're going to take, um, the, the possible jobs that you can have, uh, what, the, what the, the, the degree is about. You can find all of that uh, on, our, on our website, right? Again, I, I, I will not give you a specific answer to give to the visa uh, officer. I can't do that. I can't coach you for your visa interview. I'm just giving you these guidelines for you to follow and to come up with um, your personal specific answers, right? Uh, just, just remember that this is, you are going to the visa uh, interview. I'm not going to the visa interview. So I can give you an answer that I would give. This has, this has to be an answer that you would give to the visa officer, right? Um, has your university received any awards? Uh, no, administration courses. Yeah, as I said before, uh, for business, the the university received uh, the the university the actual program the the business college uh, is accredited by AACSB, which is a, one of the most prestigious business accreditations a university can have. Mm. Let's see what other questions. Again, I'm, I'm just here to answer questions related to the visa process. If you have any admission related questions, any program related, related questions that do not relate to the visa process, please contact your uh, recruiter. If you have any questions related to housing, to orientation, to, um, uh, to arrival, contact your uh, student service advisor. Okay, what if we don't get the emergency, emergency date also? Okay, so as, as I said before, this is it is very important for you to actually start the visa process as early as possible, right? Uh, so as soon as you get your I-20, uh, Start the process that day, right? Don't wait, don't wait. Uh, you get your I-20, go ahead and pay the I-901 fee, go ahead and submit the DS-160 form, and go ahead and schedule a visa interview appointment. Um, now, I know that uh, during 2020, 2021, uh, there were like a lot of delays when it came to, um, to visa appointments, especially for students, because they were the only um, interviews that that the, the embassy was granting. Um, if you do not get the visa, uh, the emergency update, um, again, you're not guaranteed to get an emergency date. It is a, it is, you may be eligible to get an emergency date, but if the visa, um, if the um, embassy or consulate don't have an appointment available, unfortunately, 
you may have to wait until the next entry term uh, to, to apply to Troy. So we will just have to issue you a new I-20. So you can, um, you know, you can go to the visa interview with an updated I-20, right? Uh, again, the emergency date uh, could be, it could be available, but uh, it is not, it is not uh, guaranteed that it will be available. Again, I see a lot of questions here related to other things other than the visa process. Um, and um, just because uh, otherwise, if I if I stay answering every single question, we'll be here for like four hours. So I'm, I will just cover everything related to the visa process, okay? Okay, so this is a good question. There is no uh, slot available in India, so I'm planning to go to uh, Thailand for interview. Um, does it affect uh, in my process? Okay, so in India, there's a lot of consulates in India. Have you checked? Uh, I think there's uh, Mumbai, New Delhi. Um, what else? Um, off, off the top of my head, I can't think of, all, of them all, but there is a lot of uh, consulates, so I'm not sure if you check them all, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, you, again, you can go to Thailand and you can apply as a third country national. I mentioned this during the presentation, right? Now, you have to uh, keep in mind, third country nationals, they usually have a harder time getting visas. I Sincerely, I don't know the reason why third country nationals have a harder time getting visas. It is possible that there's a lot of third country nationals that get visas all the time, uh, but... For some reason, it, it is a bit, it is not, again, it's not impossible and they give visas all the time. It is just a bit harder to get a visa in an other country that is not your home country. Just keep that in mind. Uh, it is a small risk that you're taking. If the visa is refused, we will be banned for nine months for the interview. What will be do then? Okay, so I'm not sure when you read that, you're not banned uh, from interviewing again. You can actually be denied and, and uh, you know, you will, of course you will receive an appointment, uh, a new appointment. So you're not gonna receive an appointment like two days after just because you had a visa interview uh, before. Uh, it's not your band. Maybe it's just the next uh, appointment available for you is nine months from from the moment you're applying. Uh, but you're not you're not banned for for nine months to to reapply to a student visa. You can I, I mean I I've talked to students who applied for a student visa. Uh, they got denied and then they were able to receive a new a new appointment like two weeks later. Okay. Um, let's see where else. Um, What if we don't get an emergency date? I believe I will just answer that. Okay, I believe I got to the bottom. I see there's a lot of questions about the majors and a lot of questions related to, um, I see accounting and business and computer science. Again, all these questions are uh, are not related to, to the actual visa process. So I will just let, uh, if, you, if you have any of these questions, again, related to majors or anything like that, you can uh, you can contact uh, your um, your recruiters, or you can actually contact if you have any questions specifically related to the program. Um, you can con contact uh, one of our faculty members. All their information is uh, on our website. Uh, you can reach out to them, and uh, they'll be happy to to provide you with information related to their programs.
U.S. Consul appointment website one work is showing that's it's showing that's blocked. Uh, the consulate appointment website. Uh, make sure that it's not uh, something that your browser is blocking it or that your country is blocking it. I would say maybe try with a different browser. Um, and if you are, if you can, maybe try with a, a VPN. Maybe uh, could be maybe your your browser is blocking it, your internet service provider is blocking it, or maybe um, your your country may be blocking it. Uh, I really don't know, uh, but I, I know the website should be working fine. Okay, I see this is. Okay, um, I believe, did I get to the bottom of all the, so is that all the questions you guys have? Anything else that you guys want to ask? Um, I know Stephanie has been, Stephanie uh, Stephanie Park, she, she, she is one of our um, student service advisors. Uh, she's in the chat and she's been uh, sharing information with you guys as well. Um, let's see. I would recommend you not to share personal information like your phone number in the chat. Um, but anyway. So uh, any other questions? If not, uh, we will just uh, finish the presentation right now. I will share this presentation with you guys uh, either today or early next week. Uh, I will share the recording and I will share the actual slides as well. Okay, sounds like uh, there's no more questions. If you have any more questions, you're always welcome to uh, reach out to us. You can reach out to us uh, via email and uh, we'll, be, we'll be more than happy to help you uh, with any questions. Again, anything related to your programs, uh, contact your recruiter. If you have any questions related to the, uh, the visa process right now, I'll be happy to answer them. If you haven't received your I-20, even though you created your Trojan Pass, that means that maybe you are missing your financial documents. I would recommend you to go back to enroll.troy.edu, uh, log in, go to the application that you created, and check your supplemental items. Make sure that your financial statement is updated and that your sponsor letter is also updated. Right? It's, it is likely that you, if you haven't received your I-20, maybe you are missing a document. Uh, my 20 says that my major is computer and information sciences, but I apply for a uh, master's in computer science. Yeah, yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, the, the, so it will say uh, computer information sciences uh, just because that is a standard name that CVS uses. Uh, it, is not, um, it is not something we actually write down. We just use a code uh, and the, that code, you're gonna see a number right next to it. And that number is just for all computer science majors. And uh, it is just like a standard name. It is not something that we specifically wrote down. Uh, okay, thank you everyone for joining me today. Uh, I will be conducting uh, a, this very same uh, webinar in uh, a month from now. Uh, the, last, um, the last Friday of June, I will be doing another one of these webinars in case you want to join, in case uh, you have any more questions. So yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, have an amazing day. And um, again, any other questions you have, we are here for you uh, and I will be able to, or will be happy, happy to help you. Everyone have a great day, uh, afternoon or evening.